Welcome to Microsoft 365 Excel, the complete story. And in video 21, we're following up on video 20, where we learned how to use Excel to calculate the future value of a bank CD. In this video, we want to see how to create a home loan mortgage schedule. Now, last video, we built the schedule for a CD. And we discovered that the calculation for interest paid, whatever's in the account previously times the period rate, was the most important calculation. In this bank mortgage example, we'll actually see that the very same calculation, interest paid, is going to be the heart and soul of how you build a schedule like this. Now, actually, the monthly payment calculation will really be the heart and soul. But when we calculate the interest paid for each monthly payment that's sent to the bank, that calculation will help explain why a home mortgage loan takes so long to pay off. Now, just as in last video and all the way back to MEX video number two, when building an Excel model, it's Excel's golden rule that we have to follow. Now, here's the task at hand. BECU Bank issues a 30-year loan for 450 k and the APR is 6% compounded monthly. And we want to build a schedule that shows the interest paid for each monthly payment. Now, the loan amount, that's going to be the present value, 450 k annual percentage rate. I'm going to enter it as a decimal. You can enter it as a percent if you'd like. 30 years, that's a typical length for a home mortgage loan. And periods per year, well, they said compound monthly. So we put a 12, and we'll have to make payments every month. Now, total periods, that'll be the total number of rows in our schedule. Well, we have 30 years times 12 months. That'll give us 360. And as we talked about last video, well, the bank would love to charge you 6% each month but that's not how it works. We take that annual percentage rate divided by the number of periods per year, and that's called the period rate. Now, when we get to calculating monthly PMT, the math behind this calculation is not quite as straightforward as the math we learned last video. And in fact, this is the formula right here. And this is one of a number of very famous financial formulas invented by Fibonacci all the way back in the 12th century. So in fact, they have been doing loan calculations a very long time. Luckily, we have the PMT function in Excel. And in fact, Excel has many awesome financial functions to cover lots of the complicated math. Now, you can try this formula if you want. It'll give us the right answer. The monthly payment is going to be $2,697.98. But in Excel, we have amazing financial functions. Now, the key to all of these is that when it says rate and NPER, that's total number of periods. That's going to be period rate and total number of periods. So we select the period rate, comma, total number of periods. Notice those have the same unit, months. And then present value. That's the amount of the loan at the time it's issued. Now, all of the financial functions work with cash flow. And if you think about the cash flow for you as the homeowner, well, the bank gives this to you. So it's actually a positive. If we're doing it from the point of view of the bank, then because the bank takes it from their account and gives it to the homeowner, it would be a negative. So we enter the cash flow as a positive. And that's why when we enter this formula, it will deliver the payment as a negative. Because from your point of view, your payment each month comes out of your wallet or purse. Now, there's a few other arguments here that we're not going to need here, comma, future value. That's if you have a balloon payment at the end. And that would be entered as a negative because it's coming out of your pocket. And then comma type, almost all consumer loans are paid at the end of the period. If it was at the beginning, then you'd have to put a 1 in. Both of those arguments are optional. Now, because 
this was a positive. We got it. When we enter it, the payment is negative because we're paying that each month. Now we're going to do the schedule two ways. We'll do it longhand so that we can understand the math behind the calculations. And then we'll do it with dynamic spilled array formulas. Now when you do a mortgage schedule like this, the main purpose is to list the monthly payment and break it apart into the two parts. How much of that payment is paid as interest and how much goes to reducing your loan. Now we're going to need 0 to 360. In last video, we did a copy and paste trick, but I got to show you a great trick for incrementing numbers. We put the start number, and then there's the fill handle. And if you hover your cursor, and when you see your cross hair or angry rabbit, you don't left click, you right click, drag down, drag back, and let go. That opens a secret menu, and we point to series. Let me do that again, because a lot of times people don't get this. Right click, drag down, drag back, let go. Secret menu, click Series. And I always get this wrong. I forget and leave rows, and then it spills the numbers this way. I'm going to remember to do columns, so it spills down the column. There's the step value, and all I want to do is stop at 360. When I click OK, just like that, Control down arrow. There it is, 0 to 360, Control up arrow. Now for monthly payment, we're going to list the same amount every single row. And it is a negative, but traditionally in a mortgage schedule, we don't list it as a negative. So I'm going to add a negative, click F4, Control Enter, double click and send it down. That way we have that amount in every row. And for every new month, we can calculate the two parts. Now before we calculate interest paid, we bring our balance down, 4,500. Notice that's at time 0. No interest paid, no balance reduction at time 0. That's just the amount that's sitting in the account for one month. When you get to the end of the first month, well, what's the period rate? There it is. What amount do you still owe? The full amount. So we equal period rate, F4 to lock it, times whatever sitting in the account for the previous period. Now when I hit tab, $2,250. You sent in $2,697. And the bank took almost all of it as interest. And that's always going to be the case in the top part of your mortgage schedule. In the early years of paying off your loan, most of your payment is interest. And this makes sense because just as last video when we were earning interest, it's always the balance from the previous period times the period rate. So in the early years when you haven't paid off very much, it's just flat out going to be a big number. Now the amount we get to reduce our loan by is the full payment minus the amount that the bank took as interest, tab. So there it is. You sent in 2697 and they only let you reduce your loan by 447. Equals, we'll get the previous balance, and then we'll get the amount that's left over after the bank takes the interest. And of course, now we have a slightly smaller amount. So equals whatever was sitting in the account for the full month times the period rate, F4, tab. Now it's a little bit smaller than the previous amount, so when we subtract the full amount we sent in minus the amount the bank took as interest. Now, this month we get to reduce our loan by 450. Equals previous amount minus principal reduction and enter. Now we can copy these formulas down, highlight, double click, click in a cell, control down arrow, and the math works out perfect because on your 360th loan, you don't owe anything anymore. And of course, near the end, when you send in the full 2,697, hardly any of it goes to interest. Almost all of it goes to reducing the principal. Now, a schedule like this is not just helpful for consumer loans. This is also how corporate bonds, and bond is just a fancy word for debt, but bonds are amortized like this. That means on the income statement, the interest is that amount. On the balance sheet, 
you reduce the loan by that much. Now, when you take the CPA exam, some of the hardest questions are about bonds. But I know when I took the CPA exam, because I knew how to do it in Excel, and in particular, I knew this calculation right here, I flew right through those bond questions. All right, let's see how to build this with dynamic spilled array formulas. I'm going to right click, hide. Now, I've already added the conditional formatting to this spilled report here. We learned how to do that last video. And in this column, we need 0 to 360. So we use sequence. Rows, well, we need 360 plus 1, comma, comma, because we're starting at 0. Tab, down arrow, and the monthly payment. Well, I need to spill the same number. So we're going to use sequence again. Rows is 360, comma, comma, the start. We'll use our monthly payment, comma, and the increment is 0. Yes, this is the formula to repeat a number. Close parentheses and tab. Now, last video, we calculated the loan balance as a spilled array. And then this, we're going to do the reverse here. Interest paid to bank, we know that it's the period rate times the previous balance. But instead, we're going to use the IPMT function. This is like PMT. But instead of calculating the full payment, it calculates just the interest part. The rate, period rate, comma, the period. This is where we need 1 to 360. We actually could use drop like we did last video, refer to this, pound, comma, and then drop the first row. That just gives us, instead of 0 to 360, 1 to 360. It's also all right to not use drop here and use sequence to spell 1 to 360, comma, number of total periods, 360, comma, the present value, positive 4,500. We don't have a balloon payment at the end, so we don't need FV. Type, well, the default is payment at the end, so we close parentheses, and that will spill the result. Now, look at this. That actually got currency number format, and you can see that up here. And this one didn't. So I'm going to come up and apply general or use the keyboard to erase all number formatting. Control, Shift, Grave Accent, tilde. Balance reduction is easy enough equals this spilled array here, total amount minus the spilled array of the amounts that the bank took as interest, and Enter. So we have the balance reduction. Now we need the loan balance. And we're actually going to use another built-in function called cumulative principle. And this will give us a running total for the balance reduction amount. So in the first row, it'll get exactly that. In the second row, it'll get the sum of the first two. Now we need period rate, comma, number of periods is 360, comma, present value, comma. And the starting period, well, for row one, it's 1 to 1. In row two, it's 1 to 2. So we'll put starting period 1, comma. And here's where we need the numbers, 1 to 360. Now I could use drop, but we could also use sequence, rows, I'm just going to say 360. That'll give me 1 to 360. And that's the part of the formula that allows this to spill. In essence, we're doing a function argument array operation right there, comma. And cumulative principle, unlike many of the other financial functions, doesn't have a default for type. So we have to say which one. And we're doing end of the period. So 0, close parentheses. And when I Control Enter, there's my running total for the loan reduction amount, F2. What do we need to do for each one of these values? I'm just going to say original present value. And because the numbers being spit out are negative, we're going to add. Control Enter, and there's our balance. Control down arrow, and sure enough, at time 360, we have a balance of 0. Now, I spilled all of the formulas from the very top cell. And I really want the starting balance here. So I'd like this formula to spill from the top. So I'm going to copy this, actually cut Control x Backspace, Shift-Enter. And all I'm going to do is take the original loan amount and stack it on top of our loan balance column. So we're going to use VStack to vertically stack the array 1. Well, it's just a single number, the present value, comma. And now I'm going to Control-V. So it will stack these two things up. 
close parentheses, control enter, and bam, there's our spilled column. Control down arrow, we have a zero in period 360. Up arrow, and we have our spilled array formula with the original loan balance in time zero. All right, that was a lot of fun with building an Excel model following Excel's golden rule and building a mortgage loan schedule, both the old-fashioned way and a dynamic spilled array formula way. All right, this is the penultimate second-to-last MEX video. So we'll see you next last MEX video.